Ayan, so uh, mukhang may technical problem talaga yung ating speaker today, no? So, para hindi masayang yung oras natin, um, manood muna tayo ng TED, TED Talk entitled um, Every Kid Needs a Champion by Rita Pearson. Ayan, so this was prepared by Group 2. I have spent my entire life either at the schoolhouse, on the way to the schoolhouse, <laughs> or talking about what happens in the schoolhouse. <laughs> Both my parents were educators, my maternal grandparents were educators, and for the past 40 years, I've done the same thing. And so needless to say, over those years, I've had a chance to look at education reform from a lot of perspectives. Some of those reforms have been good, some of them have been not so good. And we know why kids drop out, we know why kids don't learn. It's either poverty, low attendance, negative peer influences, we know why. But one of the things that we never discuss or we rarely discuss is the value and importance of human connection, relationships. James Comer, says that no significant learning can occur without a significant relationship. George Washington Carver says all learning is understanding relationships. Everyone in this room has been affected by a teacher or an adult. For years, I have watched people teach. I have looked at the best and I've looked at some of the worst. A colleague said to me one time, they don't pay me to like the kids. They pay me to teach a lesson. The kids should learn it. I should teach it. They should learn it. Case closed. Well, I said to her, you know, kids don't learn from people they don't like. <laughs> she said, that's just a bunch of hooey. And I said to her, well, your year is going to be long and arduous, dear. <laughs> Needless to say, it was. Some people think that you can either have it in you to build a relationship or you don't. I think Stephen Covey had the right idea. He said you ought to just throw in a few simple things, like seeking first to understand as opposed to being understood. Simple things like apologizing. You ever thought about that? Tell a kid you're sorry, they're in shock. I taught a lesson once on ratios. I'm not real good with math, but I was working on it. <laughs> and I got back and looked at that teacher edition. I taught the whole lesson wrong. <laughs> so I came back to class the next day and I said, look guys, I need to apologize. I taught the whole lesson wrong. I'm so sorry. They said, that's okay, Ms. Pearson. You were so excited. We just let you go. <laughs> I have had classes that were so low, so academically deficient that I cried. I wondered, how am I going to take this group in nine months from where they are to where they need to be? And it was difficult. It was, it was awfully hard. How do I raise the self-esteem of a child and his academic achievement at the same time? One year, I came up with a bright idea. I told all my students, you were chosen to be in my class. Because I am the best teacher and you are the best students, they put us all together so we could show everybody else how to do it. One of the students said, really? <laughs> I said, really? We have to show the other classes how to do it. So when we walk down the hall, people will notice us. So you can't make noise, you just have to strut. And I gave him a saying to say, I am somebody. I was somebody when I came. I'll be a better somebody when I leave. I am powerful and I am strong. I deserve the education that I get here. I have things to do, people to impress and places to go. And they said, yeah. <laughs> you say it long enough, it starts to be a part of you. And so, I gave a quiz, 20 questions. Student missed 18. I put a plus two on this paper and a big smiley face. 
He said, Miss Pearson, is this an F? I said, yes. <laughs> he said, then why'd you put a smiley face? I said, because you on the roll. You got two right, you didn't miss them all. I said, and when we review this, won't you do better? He said, yes, ma'am, I can do better. You see, minus 18 sucks all the life out of you. Plus two said, I ain't all bad. <laughs> Four years I watched my mother take the time at recess to review, go on home visits in the afternoon, buy combs and brushes and peanut butter and crackers to put in her desk drawer for kids that needed to eat and a washcloth and some soap for the kids who didn't smell so good. See, it's hard to teach kids who stink. <laughs> and kids can be cruel. And so she kept those things in her desk and years later after she retired, I watched some of those same kids come through and say to her, you know, Miss Walker, you made a difference in my life. You made it work for me. You made me feel like I was somebody when I knew at the bottom I wasn't. And I want you to just see what I've become. And when my mama died two years ago at 92, there were so many former students at her funeral. It brought tears to my eyes, not because she was gone, but because she left a legacy of relationships that could never disappear. Can we stand to have more relationships? Absolutely. Will you like all your children? Of course not. <laughs> and you know your toughest kids are never absent. <laughs> never. You won't like them all, and, and, and the, the, the tough ones show up for a reason. It's the connection. It's the relationships. And while you won't like them all, the key is they can never, ever know it. So teachers become great actors and great actresses, and we come to work when we don't feel like it, and we listen to policy that doesn't make sense, and we teach anyway. <laughs> we teach anyway, because that's what we do. Teaching and learning should bring joy. How powerful would our world be if we had kids who, who were not afraid to take risks, who were not afraid to think, and who had a champion? Every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection and insists that they become the best that they can possibly be. Is this job tough? You betcha. Oh, God, you betcha. But it is not impossible. We can do this. We're educators. We're born to make a difference. Thank you so much. Oh, hello. Good day to all. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Klaro ba yung boses ko? Part react naman po. Ko klaro. Okay, ayan. Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. At alam po, excited na excited na tayo sa discussion natin. At yun nga yung kanina, yung intermission natin, yung pet dog, yung meat. Ay, Rita Pelton, alam ko marami kayong natutunan at syempre nakakatawa din yung iba. Pero sana may natutunan kayo sa intermission natin kasi ako natutun may natutunan talaga ako sa kanya. Gusto, gusto ko yung sinabi niya na teaching and learning should be joy. Kasi alam mo yun, napakahalaga talaga nung role na meron yung teacher, yung role na meron sila sa society natin. Kaya naman, honestly, hindi siya madali, maging guro, hindi madali kasi parte tayo o di kaya parte sila, instrumento sila rather ng edukasyon. Kaya yun, tuwag-tuwa ako doon sa mga sinabi ni, ng ni Rita Person. At saka siguro ang pinaka nakakamangha ni sinabi niya na, we're educators, we are born to make a difference. Kaya important yung importante na we should build relationships with our students, with our future students. We should connect with them kasi iba yung, iba yung 
Tapos, ayan, na meron kang party sa mga estudyante. So, ayan, hindi na natin patatagalin pa. We will proceed to our webinar. I am Mian Seriano, and I will be your master of ceremony in this webinar discussion about your philosophical heritage. This time, with the help of our speaker's discussion, we will be aware and be guided of our personal teaching philosophy. Dito na yung papasok yung mga tanong natin na paano ba ako magtuturo? Bakit ba ako magtuturo? O di kaya ano ba yung mga dapat kong ituro sa aking mga estudyante? So, yan. Without further ado, let me introduce to you our first speaker, speaker with high honors in grade 11, grade 12 representative, an English club president, and media club vice president in their senior high school department, President Mr. Ms. Joanna May Ramirez, presenting philosophy of education and also seven major philosophies. Magandang hapon, magandang umaga po, ma'am. Hello po. Hello po. Rinig po ako ng maayos? Yes po, ma'am. Arinig po ako ng maayos. Okay po. Salamat po. Ayan. Uh, let's proceed. Okay. Let's uh, na lang uh, gawin lang natin to more conversational para mas magaan sa atin, sa atin pare-parehas. Okay. Let's start. Ang topic natin again is uh, your philosophical heritage. Next po. Okay. Let's go to introduction. Um... Ever since natututo tayo at ever since hindi lang siya basta natututo, ina-apply natin siya habang tumatagal. Um, especially ever since na masimula senior high, na-encounter natin yung subject na philosophy. Uh, when you go back to the basics, philosophy consists of two Greek words which are philo and sophia. Philo means love and sophia means wisdom. And pag ipinagsama mo yun, ang ibig sabihin, love of wisdom. At, di, at ayun, dito ma, ma, matutukoy natin yun. Una, um, ngayong nasa phase tayo na medyo crucial since ang age range natin dito for, for sure 19, 20, 21, uh, medyo ay na, crucial siya kasi in a way na uh, we're letting ourselves to see the realities versus kung ano yung nakuha nating fantasies ng bata pa tayo. And habang tumatagal na marami tayong na-encounter, marami tayong taong na meet marami tayong natututunan. At dahil dyan, natanong natin sa sarili natin, who am I? What am I living for? The next po. And why am I here? Pwede, pa next po, ayan. What am I here? Sino, ta, sino nga ba ako? Ano nga bang ginagawa ko dito? At bakit ako nandito? At the purpose. At sa, paning, and sa perspective ng teachers, ito ang nakikita natin. Pa next po. Why do I... Wait, pabalik po. <laughs> Doon po sa why do I teach? Sorry, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> why do I teach? Ayun nga yung pagpili pa lang natin ng, pag, ng program na pupuntahan natin at kung ano na yung gusto natin at paano natin deliver At sa module na to, meron tayong objectives which are affective, cognitive, and psychomotor. Let's go for our affective. Sa affective, ang, uh, tayong lahat, matututo tayo, more aware of and be able to internalize their personal teaching philosophy. It's more of, ay nga, internalization, emotions, kung, paan, kung bakit natin to pipiliin. Next, we'll go, we'll go to cognitive. Okay. Okay. Uh, cognitive more will be more knowledgeable of the different reasons for developing their teaching philosophies. It's more of thinking and reasoning out kung bakit tayo nandito. 
ma-figure out natin yan mamaya. And next, the last one, we'll go to psychomotor. Okay. Psychomotor, we will be guided by and be able to verbalize their own individual teaching philosophy. After nating mag-internalize with our emotions, with our um, intellectual capacity and ability, we'll think and uh, reason out. Dito, from thinking, um, mag-verbalize na natin. From thinking, we will be applying na kung ano yung mga natutunan natin. And... Next na po. Statement of teaching philosophy. Okay. Teaching philosophies, yung statement na yun, dapat ano siya, personal approach. Um, hindi lang siya, um, kumbaga, description ng kung ano yung Uh, person, uh, yung person, subjective approaches mo. Dapat and din siya. Compilation din siya. Kung ano yung mga unfiltered um, experiences, best experiences sa pagiging teacher mo. Dapat ay na personal reflective nga siya. Tapos um, subjective siya in, in a way na dapat nakabase siya sa'yo kung anong uh, natutunan mo, essence mo bilang teacher. And katulad nga nang sabi ni katulad nga nang sabi dito It is a systematic and critical rationality that focuses uh, focuses on the important components defining effective teaching and learning in a particular discipline and or in institutional context. Okay, sa pamamagitan ng teaching philosophy, we will be having our objectives. Next na po. Okay, next pa ko. Yan. Okay. The first one. Wait lang. Wait lang. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, the first one. Wait tayo sa una. Ayan, okay. Doon tayo sa clarify. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ang magalain lang na ito. <laughs> okay. Diyan muna tayo. Okay. Una, um, sa pamamagitan ng statement of teaching philosophy, we'll be clarif clarifying what you believe good teaching to be. Tayo magbibigay mismo yun as teachers kung ano yung definition, kung paano, ang, ano ang pagtuturo at hindi lang basta pagtuturo yun. Dapat both ways siya. At um, dapat uh, lahat matututo. Um, give and take. Especially. Katulad nun. And the, the second one, explain what you hope to achieve in teaching. Ano yung nilulok forward mo bilang teacher? Sa experiences mo, natutunan mo, and such things. And next, contextualize your teaching strategies and other evidence of teaching effectiveness. Ano yung mga approach and technique mo para maging mas engaging yung pagtuturo mo. And the last one is provide an opportunity for reflection and on the development of your own teaching. Um, katulad naman na lagi natin ginagawa, it is a must to have feedback. Kapag may feedback tayo, we will know the points to for improvement. Ay, malalaman natin kung ano yung mga um, dapat natin ipagpatuloy at yung mga bagay na where you can do better and you could have done better. Doon natin, sa, ay, doon sa pamagitan ng state, uh, statement of teaching philosophy, ma, matatakil yan. Okay, let's go to the philosophy of education. Okay, sige, ano naman. Hanggang sa matapos lahat ng tanong. Yan, okay na. Diyan muna tayo. Okay, sa so philosophy of education, um, as, uh, ever since naman, meron tayong titawag na, let's go back to the, to the basic ones. Uh, kwento muna tayo. Sa so philosophy of education, meron, education, meron tayong titawag na philosophers of education. Sa so philosophers of education, sila yung mga fascinated talaga sa education. 
kung ano yung mga konsepto, kung ano yung mga constructs, ideologies na meron ang, ender, ang education, the underlying concepts, the underlying ideas na meron na education, they ask them. Lahat tinatanong nila, katulad ng mga tanong na yun na nasa screen, what should be the aims of or purposes of education? Sino nga, who, who should be educated? Sino nga ba yung dapat na masakop nito? Should education differ according to, the, to natural interests and abilities? What role should be the state play in education? Paano nga ba tayo magtutulungan? At kung mapapansin natin, uh, lahat yan hanggang ngayon evident. Um, the fact na ev- evident siya, may ibang nagtatanong na bakit Uh, ever since tinag-aralan naman na yan, bakit nanggang ngayon, natanong pa rin siya. Bakit natanong pa rin, kung hindi siya masagot, bakit pa natin tinatanong? Well, in fact, um, dapat, uh, since subjective nga siya, ever, katulad nga nang sasabi ko kanina pa, every society, every generation, we have to know, um, we have to know the answer, kasi case-to-case siya, uh, case-to-case basis siya, every situation, Iba-iba yung application, iba-iba yung sakop mo. Katulad naman na ever since pagdating sa bahay, sa bahay pa lang natin, natututo na tayo. Um, mas uh, Magpunta tayo sa kumbaga, normal setting. Sa bahay, tinuturuan na tayo. Paglabas natin ng bahay, meron tayong kaibigan. May matutunan tayo. Um, every time na lumalabas tayo, circle gets wider and the communication um, gets larger. And ever at doon pa lang naman natututo na tayo. Involved dun education, in, uh, informal man or formal, schools, uh, scholarly, academic mo uh, hindi. And from nga doon na since nasabi ko nga kanina, merong mga philosophers of education. Um hanggang ngayon ginagamit pa rin yung mga sagot nila. Nag-generate yung mga uh, mga studies before, mga conducted uh, observations before, nag-generate siya ng mga bago. sa ngayon. At itong um, ang tawag dito, itong philosophy of education, it's more of ay nga, philosophy than empirical. Kasi kapag philosophy nga, subjective, more than in- empirical, medyo systematic. Okay, let's use empirical. Pero in such a way na it will be more systematic na if um, sa isang step, meron tayong dapat uh, gawin. We can do better, go back to the previous step and improve something that can be improved. Develop something that can be developed. At yun, ang um, phil- philosophical argumentation or reasoning ang kailangan dito. Okay. Let's uh, proceed to the main topic dito, which are the seven major philosophies of education. Next po. Okay, let's go to the first one. Okay, diyan muna tayo. Sa philosophies of education, meron tayong pito. Una, uh, essentialism. Sa essentialism, um, ang mga teachers, katulad ng teachers, teach for learners at to acquire basic knowledge, skills, and values. They transmit and maintain the necessary fundamentals in human, human culture. Uh, ang mga tinuturo dito, um, ito yung mga inaasahan na ipasa from one generation to another. Since basic nga lang siya, fundamentals lang siya, um, hindi siya, well-defined siya kung paano siya ituturo. Pero uh, case-to-case nga rin siya, katulad ng sinasabi natin kanina pa. na dapat uh, manatili siya. More of cultural. Um, next, ano pa yung mga dapat na mayroon sa uh, curriculum na ito? Pa next po. One, two, three, four. Okay. So, uh, um, dito, papasada natin, adhere to a well-defined curriculum of basic skills and subject. inculcate a core based on traditional Western and American values of patriotism, hard work, effort, punctuality, respect for authority and civility, 
manage classrooms efficiently and effectively as spheres of discipline and order, promote students on the basis of academic achievements and social uh, promotion. Ayun, katulad dito, um, values of patriotism, hard work, efforts, punctuality, respect for authority and civility. Ay, kung ano yung mga dapat i-maintain sa culture natin, papasa from one generation to another. And one example of this is, my next po, Um, pagalang katulad sa ating mga Pilipino in Filipino context culture pag uh, paggalang is sobrang evident uh, we we must know how to greet people ng maayos uh, magpupo at opo at dito siya nasasama next one po Next one. Oh. Yeah. Teachers teach to develop learners into becoming an intellect, intelligent citizen of democratic country. It's more of um, pagsunod sa batas, pagsunod sa rules in sa bahay pa lang, simple man, hanggang sa... Um, Uh, uh, pag, sa pagiging citizen natin. Ipapractice natin yan dito. Um, na, sinasabi siya as um, uh, integral part kasi uh, uh, lahat tayo citizen ng country. Hindi lang tayo basta individual na kung anong meron tayo at sarili yung sinisilbihan. Marami pa tayo iba. Isa tayong anak, isa tayong kapatid, isa ta at most uh, importantly, isa rin tayong si, uh, mamamayan ng isang bansa. That may pakialam tayo. As a perspective sa teacher, sobrang importante makita yung progress na yun. From pre-service hanggang sa magtuturo na tayo. Okay. And it's more of um, teaching kesa mag-impose. Tayo ng paniniwala. Okay. Next po. Dito itong mga prince, uh, three guiding principles. Genuine education involves problem solving. Learning is enriched as students collaboratively research and share information and for, to formulate and test their hypothesis. Teachers can guide students' learning without dominating it. Ayan. Katulad nga sinabi ko, ito yung, ito yung pinaka gusto ko i-point out. Teachers can guide students learning without dominating it. It's more of teaching, it's more of guiding kesa mag-impose ka uh, ng mga bagay tayo. Okay, one example is of this is the next po Okay, ayan. Pagturo sa, pagturo sa mga bata kung paano ang mga road signages para sila susunod. And next one po. Next one po. Yan. Yan. Okay na. Teachers teach to develop students. Let's go to perennialism. Sorry. Teachers teach to, teach to develop students' rational moral powers to stimulate um students' intellects, um, teachers in their research preparation to need to study liberal arts and sciences and have experience reading and discussing. So, um, sa pamamagitan neto, um, tinit, uh, in, tinitrain ang studyante of more of moral and reasoning capacity. Nag, uh, nagbibigay tayo ng mga propositions, nagbibigay tayo ng mga situational cause and effect arguments na may na magtuturo sa bata na, na kailangan lagi may basehan. Kailangan kailangan lagi may, may may basis, may foundation para um, tulong din 'yun para sa lifelong quest nila. Pag matututo sila uh, after sa sa buhay bilang uh, hindi lang basta ta, hindi lang bilang tao kundi uh, bilang sa intellectual side nila. And dito na sasakop yung reading, writing, computation and such. And one example of this is 
more of ano to, objectives. Ayan. Una magtutuwa sa ang mga nakita natin, reading, writing, computation. Lahat yung objective, may basihan. Anong mangyari kapag ginawa mo to? Anong dapat mong gawin para makuha mo to? Same as sa buhay. Na mga pinag-aaral natin na meron, kaya kaya great books, meron siyang mga philo philosophy, marami siyang natatakil. And sa history, we'll go back na exercise talaga dito. Yung mga uh, mga bagay na bumuo sa atin. And ayun, nakakatulong siya nga. Katulad na sabi ko, nakakatulong siya for lifelong quest for truth. Yun lang. Okay, balik tayo. Meron sa, 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 uh, sa pito, nakapagtakil na tayo ng essentialism. Pangalawa, progressivism at perennialism. Meron na tayo, uh, remaining is existentialism. To be tackled by Ma'am Aileen. Thank you po. Ayan, thank you po, Ms. Ramirez. Uh, iyong napakahusay at palang mong pagbabahagi. Ayan, kulang pa tayo ng apat sa seven major philosophies. Excited na ba kayong marinig pa yung iba? Like react naman kung excited kayo. Hmm. Okay, okay, sige, okay yung heart ko. Kaya kakumpituhin na to ng ating next speaker speaker. Graduated as Accountancy Business Management Student at Center Colleges of the Philippines, Batch 2019, and a B.E.D. Representative in the Society, Miss Eileen Zetrin Cruz. Magandang hapon po, ma'am. Magandang umaga po. Am I audible? At saka kita po ba ako? Yes po. Okay. So, yun. Um, ako yung magtutuloy nung tinakel ni ate ni Miss Joanna Ramirez for the remaining four uh, major um, philosophies of education. So kanina um, to, to to add up lang ang philosophical philos, um, may ang philosophical or major philosophies of education ang mga philosophies na under dito ay um, serve as our guide on how we we guide our students inside our classroom. Katulad na lang sinabi kanina ni Ms. Joanna, through essentialism, um, the, student, the teacher focused on um, teaching the students on the basic um, morals or yung tuturuan kung paano, mag, tuturuan kung paano mag, uh, maging magalang. Um, in this... Uh, in this philosophy, yun nga, magiging focus yung ano sa basic personality and pag-uugali ng mismong bata. Through um, progressivism naman, um, natututu na, natututu um, it focus the students to become um, a responsive, um, responsible people in our, com uh, in our community, katulad na nga lang nung um, pagsunod sa mga traffic signs and um, sa kung paano um, kung saan ta kung saan yung tamang pagtawid so sa pangatlo naman is yung um, perennialism am i right yung sa kung paano uh, matututo yung mga students na mag um, mag base sa mga facts and sa mga um, informations na nagive na nagiven in our ano um sa mga ayun so i, I, ang i ano ko naman is yung exis, um existentialism paano na po so yun existentialism teachers teach to help students define their own essence rather than imposing goals on students the existentialist teacher seeks to create an awareness in each student of ultimate responsibility to her or his own education and self-definition. So in this, um, sa existentialism po, ang ipinapertain lang po dito is, um, the teacher is only a guide. Diba sa classroom kasi ang teacher ang masusunod. Pero in this, uh, sa existentialism, mas focus dun sa students. Sa kung ano yung, um, mas focus yung teacher na i-build yung, um, pagiging 
um, isang maging responsibility sa for his own. Katulad na lang ng ano, um, ang best example dito is yung pagkukonduct ng field trips eh, sa ano. Kasi dito tinitrain ng teacher yung bata na hindi lang ang mundo na ang mundo ang mundo ng bata ay hindi lang umiikot sa four um, sides ng classroom kundi binibuild din na ng teacher na yung bata is uh, maglook forward sa society niya magreflect on her on his own ano uh, on his own as a human hindi lang siya yung um, part as a student hindi lang yun yung nire-raise bilang part as a student but being uh, human in in our society. So, yun yung parang uh, inaano dito ng existentialism. Tapos, hindi ito masyadong objective. Hindi ito more than objective na dapat ganito, sagutan mo yung ganito, ganyan. Hindi. It is more on reflective. It is more on the subjective part of the students na matututuhan ng students to defend their, her, her, her or his um, worth as a human of society, hindi lang as a student. So yun, ang best example dito is, next po, ang best example dito is yung pagkukonduct ng field trips. So kung mapapansin naman natin, di ba yung layong-layo uh, na sa museum, um, di ba kung maanin natin ang mga student na malabas kapag yun nga, magkukonduct ng field trips. So ma, uh, magkakaroon sila ng idea na ah, hindi lang, hindi lang, hindi lang pala sa classroom yung meron akong matututunan kundi meron din sa labas katulad na lang dito sa pinakita diyan sa picture na yun na sa mga art museums di ba pwede kang makapag-reflect kapag may may inaano sa iyo may dinidiskus sa iyo na particular art so yun parang the students um focused here <laughs> thank you ma'am then na ano na mag-reflect pa to her to her own self to her own to her or his own um ano um uno word as a human hindi lang as a student so yun lang po next po i'm so sorry guys kung nagbabakel ako <laughs> okay po next po so yan um true behaviorism from the word itself behavior the students um will um the teachers teach to modify and shape the students' behavior. The focus of this approach is to shape students' behavior through social interactions. So, um, dito naman is pinofocus ng teacher na mabuild yung behavior ng students pa unti-unti. Kasi di ba katulad sa um, ang mga estudyante natin ay elementary. So, ang behavioral aspect niyan ay hindi pa masyadong build. So, parang meron pa silang mga behaviors na hindi masyadong kontrolado. So in this behaviorism, makakatulong to sa, sa, sa teachers kung paano mo um, imamanage yung mga estudyante mo. ba sa isang classroom, kung halimbawa meron kang 40 students, ang teacher may isang personality lang. Pero kung halimbawa meron kang 40, 40 students, meron din corresponds to 14 different personalities. So paano mo, paano uh, on... How will you um, manage these forty personalities? Kung hindi mo hindi mo ano hindi mo kabisado yung ano nila yung pag-uugale. So in this behaviorism yun lang yun yung mismo parang pin focus dito on teachers teach to modify and shape the students' behavior. Ang example dito ay ang pagbibigay ng treats sa mga estudiante kapag kapag nakagawa sila ng tama. Or kung halimbawa, sinunod nila yung rules mo. Pero dapat, take, please take note that um, hindi dapat to inaabuso um, uh, ina kasi baka masana yung mga estudyante natin na, ah, pag nakagawa ako ng tama, um, magkakaroon ako ng reward kay teacher. So dapat hindi ganun. Kailangan um, medyo learn to manage the ano din. Kung halimbawa man, ma na, um, Nasasanay na sila na laging nagtataas na kamay, na laging um, hindi, hindi nagpapasaway. Learn to ano din, adjust din yung pagbibigay ng mga ganitong treats kasi baka masanay sila. Hanggang sa yun nga, masasanay na sila na, ano, na normal na lang sa kanila yun, na hindi na sila naghahanap ng, ng treats. So yun yung isa, isa sa mga basic um, example ng behaviorism. Um, 
I-add ko lang din kapag halimbawa man sa in terms naman sa punishment. So yun, magbigay ka din ng, punish, ng certain punishment para sila ay sumunod sa'yo. Kasi sobrang, alam naman natin na ang mga bata talaga ay ano sobrang pasaway. Theory ng behaviorism talaga sa isa sa pang pinaka-importante sa atin bilang future educators in the elementary, in the elementary level. So yun po, next. So, sa linguistic philosophy naman, teachers teach to develop the communication skills of the students by understanding much deeper on its own language. So, um, to, sa title pa lang niya, alam niyo naman na kung ano yung kinofocus nito, nung philosophy na ito, it only focuses on building the communication skills of a student, of the, ab the ability of the students to communicate. Lalong-lalo na kasi, di ba, ang basic language ay ang pinakaparang importante sa atin. So, according nga kay Richard Peters, for a people's language, is it is the key to form a life which they enjoy. So, paano ka mag -e enjoy sa life kung hindi mo, learn, hindi mo, hindi mo alam kung paano makipag-communicate? Hindi mo alam kung, hindi alam ng students kung ano yung sinasabi nung, nung katabi niya. So, yun, ito lang, yun yung pinapur- um minimin ng philosophy na to kasi nga di ba ang importante ang language sa basic um learning or process ng isang child basic process of learning of a child so ang isa sa mga ano po dito yung ang naalala ko dito is yung kay Ma'am Jade yung sinasabi niya na parang in every lesson lalong lalo na kung ito ay Filipino man or English sa lesson plan um may may certain na strategies na sinasabi si Ma'am Jade doon na yung kapag magbibigay siya ng mga ano yun, yung mga words na unfamiliar tapos i-discuss niya yun sa mga students para maisili ma para doon sa students para maintindihan agad kung ano yung tinatakal na lesson. So, so parang ganun din yung ano dito sa linguistic philosophy. It is focused more on that para mas madaling um makapagpalitan ng information between the students and the teacher. Kasi kung wala yun, hindi effective ang ang teaching mo kung hindi ka naiintindihan ng students mo. So, yun po. Next. Ayan. Mag-iiwan lang tayo ng code para dito. Pabalik po, sorry. <laughs> Ayan. Ayan. Thank you po. Teaching, according to Mac McQueenery, teaching in studying linguistics provide the tools ne necessary to preserve and advance the art of reading, writing, and communication. So next po. So ayan, yung mga different language. Next po. Ayan, yung second, um, ito yung last, yung contractivism. Teachers teach to enable students to construct knowledge. It is more focused on the experimental-based activities where students learn by, they, by their own experiences and observations and create new knowledge by their thinking. So in this, uh, in this philosophy po, seventh philosophy, um, ang pinapertain lang po dito is... Um, the students will focus on ano on experimental based activities kumbaga parang matututo sila matututo sila based on their experience though um do natututo ka inside the classroom pero mas okay din kasi na magbi-build din sila ng um new knowledge based dun sa na experience nila uh, magbibigyan na lang po muna ako ng example para medyo mas ma-elaborate ko pa. So, ang example po dito is yung pag-conduct ng experimental, um, yung science experimental activity inside the classroom. So, ang di ba kasi ang focus dito is learn to construct knowledge yung student. Kailangan mag-construct ng new knowledge based on their own thinking. Um, katulad na lang dun sa science, um, sa science activity na yun, though, the students 
um, follow the instructions of the teacher. Pero while while doing that, um, mas kumbaga parang mas nadadagdagan nadadagdagan yung knowledge niya kasi may na-experience yang panibago or bago sa sistema niya. Parang ganun. Tapos that new knowledge um in constructivism kapag ang estudyante ay nakapag-raise na ng new knowledge sa ano niya sa, sa isip niya, they will learn to understand to defend ay to understand and learn to defend their their another their points of view regarding dun sa nasaksihan nila or not na na experience nila and that um new knowledge ay po pwede ding makakontribute sa panibagong um sa panibagong information sa po pwedeng ma may contribute sa educational academic community katulad na lang din sa sa science kapag di ba pag may nadidiscover tayo um kung halimbawa man ay legitimate ano na tayo pag may nadidiscover tayo pwede natin siyang i-contribute para mas maano pa mas magamit pa ng iba or maging reference pa ng iba so isa din sa mga um example dito is yung conducting a research the students um follow the teacher the research teachers na instruction kung paano mag-build ng thesis tapos yung mga students na din yung mag mag ano magko-conduct ng research and experiences din nila sa mga correspondence nila magge-gain sila ng new knowledge na ah ganito ganito ganya may theory pala na ganito tama yung theory ni ganito so the students will learn new knowledge hindi lang dun sa mismong inside the classroom kundi dun sa mismong experience nila so ito yung parang pinoportray din talaga ng constructivism. Ito yung parang pinaka nag-reflect sa akin. For me ha, for me kasi sobrang napaka ano niya, napaka um, helpful niya in terms of building the students um, ability to um, to defend their answers or to defend their um, exp uh, their thoughts based sa na-experience nila. Kasi, di ba, kapag kasi tayo natututo na um, natututo sa inside the classroom may mga lessons naman kasi tayo na hindi naman na natin mat natatandaan pero may mga lessons tayo na pag once na experience na natin or na, na experience natin yung lesson yun by conducting an experimental activity or what 'di ba most of us natatandaan natin yun kasi meron tayong new knowledge na na nai-imply sa atin na ay oo oh, oh, ganito ganyan meron po lang ganito ganyan yung tapos ang isa sa mga techniques din dito ay kung halimbawa yung mga yung teacher magbibigay na ng example tapos yung sa example na yon um minin talaga ng teacher na mali so yung students mag magte-think na ay bakit mali yung tinu bakit mali yung nandun sa um points ni teacher so yun yung magiging ano magiging importance ng constructivism dito to learn new knowledge and defend the student's thoughts regard uh, based on what he or she experienced on that particular activity so yun po as above all these seven um, major or philosophies of education ay sobrang napaka importante sa atin kasi it will serve as our guide on how we on how we um i manage yung students natin kasi hindi naman po pwedeng isang at uh, saka don't limit yourselves on these seven major philosophies of education wag ka lang pipiliin ng isa baka kasi eh, ano kasi baka kasi hindi siya suitable for this student hindi siya ang perennialism hindi suitable sa karamihan pero in some o oh, pwede so kailangan All in all, pwede mo siyang i-apply o serve as our guide kasi makiki doon mo din makikita yung personality, yung um, weakness and strengths ng students mo. So yun lang po. And that uh, end po ng lesson po natin. I hope you learned something from us po regarding sa ay um, despite na nagkaroon po ng technical difficulties. So yun lang po. Ayan, maraming salamat po. Talaga natuto, natuto kami sa mga sinabi niyo po. Again, maraming salamat po to our two speakers, Ms. Ramirez and Ms. Cruz, who display knowledge in their respective topics. So, allow me to read their certificate of official. First, awarded to Ms. Joanna May L. Ramirez 
providing her valuable insight and knowledge as a speaker in the webinar, Your Philosophical Heritage during the BA Ed 2-1 and webinar series in the subject teaching profession. Given the 28th day of October, 2021 via Zoom video communication. So ayun po, thank you po Ms. Ramirez. Inaanyayahan ko po ang lahat na magbukas ng camera for our photo opportunity with Ms. Ramirez. Huwag na po kayong mahiya, magbukas ng camera. So okay po, kung yan din po, okay lang din po. Picture na po tayo. At yun one, two, three, four. Okay po. Thank you po. At hindi lang, at hindi lang po yun. Also, a certificate of appreciation is also awarded to Miss Aileen Veterin A. Cruz for imparting also her valuable insight and knowledge as a speaker in the webinar. Your philosophical heritage during the BE, BL 2.1 and webinar series in the subject teaching profession. Given this 28th day of October 2021 via Zoom video communication. Thank you for Ms. Eileen Cruz. And I invite all of you to open their cameras again for a photo opportunity. And po, picture na po tayo. Uh, po may hahabol pa po. Ayan po. Sige po. Habol lang po kayo. Ayan. Picture na po. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you po for participating. Sa naman po virtual clap dyan. Kung nag -e enjoy pa po kayo sa pagtututu natin, sa pagkatuto. Ayan. Thank you. Thank you po. So, ngayon po, we want to read your takeaways or di kaya po realization or discovery, new discovery, new knowledge sa ating mga discuss, sa ating mga speakers. So, hinihintayin po namin yung mga takeaways nyo. Pero habang nagtatype po muna kayo, allow me to share mine po. Yung takeaways ko po, o siguro mas fit ko katawagin na discovery or di kaya um, realization. Uh, so, yung akin, ewan ko kung paano ko yun. So, siguro mas lalong tumaas yung tingin ko sa mga teacher. I mean, ewan ko kung ako lang o oh, kayo din kasi minsan ang lagi ko lang iniisip na yung teacher nandyan to share their knowledge, to stock their knowledge in our mind. Pero kasi yun yung sinasabi sa essentialism, di ba? Na impart nila yung knowledge nila sa atin, yung mga skills nila sa atin. Para along the journey, it will serve as a guidance hanggang sa maabot natin yung profession na gusto natin. Yun yung essentialism. Pero as we go on the seven major of philosophies, grabe, hindi lang pala yun yung mga sinuturo sa atin ng mga teacher natin. Yung mga pwedeng ituro sa atin ng mga teacher natin. Andyan yung to develop their communication skills. Meron pa dyan teacher speak so that their students will learn to become an intelligent citizen. Tapos yung pinaka-favorite ko, yung existentialism. Yung sinabi na teachers teach so that um, their students will define their own essence. Yun yung pinaka-favorite ko. Tapos grabe yung role ng teacher. Tapos isipin ko pa lang na magiging ganun ako, magiging teacher. Yes, saying it po. <laughs> grabe. Ang saya, nakakamangha na magiging party ka ng mga buhay ng mga magiging future students po. So, ayan, sana meron sa yung takeaways na pwede natin basahin. Mm -hmm. Yan po, meron po pa tayong PowerPoint sa so, our takeaways. Magbasahin po natin yan. Mm -hmm. And meron kay Ate Ari po. Teachers play an important role in shaping and building a student's behavior and knowledge. Tama ka po dyan. 
And next, teachers are very flexible when it comes to teaching. They know how to respond to students' needs, especially with the help of the philosophies of teaching. Grabe, talaga, totoo. Ayun po, may dagdag pa kay ate Camille Bergado. Realization in this is that as aspiring educators, we have a lot to learn in order to properly invest in our students, not only in the subject, but in so much more outside the classroom. Yes. Ang dami talaga, no? Ang dami natin realization. Ang dami natin mga discovery na nalalaman. At saka matutulungan din tayo nito pag tayo na yung naging teacher. May mga guide na tayo sa mga own teaching person, own teaching philosophy natin. So, ayan, so, natutuwa kami na may mabasa o may malaman na may takeaways kayo sa ating mga discussion. Kaya hindi na natin patatagalin pa. Um, medyo napahaba na ako ng tika. So, ayan, maraming salamat sa mga nag-share at sa mga gusto pong mag-share open naman po yung chat box natin. So, ayan, for now, let me announce something para before we end this webinar. Pero meron pa pong second part sa po. So, I would like to remind all sa announcement po namin those who participated in the webinar that they should answer the audiovisual evaluation form because it will serve as an attendance. So again po, paalala lang po, no evaluation form po means no certificates and not being allowed to take the quiz. Pero no worries man po kung may unstable connection kayo o di kaya nagkaroon talaga ng problema sa ating connection ma-access pa rin yung quiz natin sa loob ng sampung araw. Kaya marami pa po kayong time to take the quiz. And it will be the link in regards for the evaluation form and quiz. It will be posted after the webinar in our teaching profession group chat. Same with certificates po kapag kompleto na ang lahat, nakapagsagot na po ang lahat, it will be posted in our group chat. That's all. Again, masaya po ako na magkakasama tayong natututo. I am Lian Sayano, your master of family. Thank you po. Huwag po munang umalis kasi marami pa po tayong matutunan sa next slide. Thank you.